Hello, everyone. So, a while back, we talked about these Transformer stamps from the Royal Mail, which have a interesting place in history now, which is weird and unfortunate. However, it did get me thinking about some interesting Transformer collaboratives that we've had in the past, and just how weird they have gotten, you know? Like, I don't mean, like, collaborative toys, you know, like the Ectotron and Gigawatt, like, all of that, that's fine, that's cool. But there's bizarre ones that have nothing to do with toys that I kind of feel like deserve being brought up, so we can just go over just how strange Transformers has gotten, especially when it goes into media it's not familiar with. So... This is just a quick list. This is a abbreviated list, by the way. This could go on for hours. There's been so many weird crossovers and collaborations, you know, all, you know, from just like oddball toys all the way to like special Burger King menu items and the super creepy version of the king we will not talk about because he's already creepy enough. But Let's just point out a few fun ones, shall we? And we're going to start in the world of video games because Transformers has been doing a lot of video game collaborative stuff over recent years. The One of the weird ones to me is Smite, which is this, like, uh, you know, online arena game, which is supposed to be about different gods from different uh, pantheons from around the world. So to start throwing in... Giant alien robots is a little bit odd. Smite themselves has been branching out into a lot of collaborative stuff lately uh, that have nothing to do with, like, gods and deities. Like, the cast of Ruby is in Smite. But it does feel strange when, you know, like, I can, I can smite Optimus Prime as Zeus if I so chose. If things just happen to work out that way. It just doesn't, it feels like when in, on paper, it just feels like such a weird choice, you know? Like, I'm still, I'm still sitting here waiting, like, you signed a deal with Hasbro, uh, to do Snake Eyes in Fortnite, where is Optimus Prime and Bumblebee in Fortnite? Like, that's just, doesn't that seem like, if you're gonna do collaborative with a major, like, game, why wouldn't you do that? Uh, also... Uh, this doesn't go extend to just new games, it's older ones as well. Uh, so, World Fighters here is a Konami game, which is a what they call a platform fighter, which is a technical term for uh, Smash Brothers knockoff. You know, that's basically how what it is. But it is a time where Optimus Prime and uh, Megatron, in their original toy forms, uh, were actually competitive in this fighting game. Uh, so if you ever wanted Optimus Prime to beat up Solid Snake or for Megatron to shoot that kid from Beyblade, you can do that. There's a game for that. It's not a great game. I'll warn you right now, it's not really worth writing home about. It's just a really cheap Smash knockoff. But it does exist, and it does create some extremely weird... This image alone is so bizarre. It's like, seriously, I'm staring at Optimus Prime is standing next to this giant baby thing with his butt hanging out. I don't know what's going on in half of this. So, it, it, it's a nice little, like, what, 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 what am I looking at kind of moment to look back on. Devastator's in the game, too, as a background character in his G2 colors, weirdly enough, which Japan never got. So, it's a little bizarre to include. But, again... It's bizarre. Let's keep going. Let's go back to uh, modern mobile, and this is world. Uh, this is world of warships. I talked about this, I believe, in a few news recaps before, because this is again just so strange to me. So it's a game where you are in control of naval warships, fighting it out to see who's the last one floating. For whatever reason, that struck a chord as Transformers for someone. It's weird, like. We're, we're supposed to be, like, one of the biggest toy brands in the world, you know? We have these big billion-dollar blockbusters under our belt. But all of these Transformer collaborative video game stuff all seems to be, like, these really weird mobile games or, like, really weird, like, choices. Like, you're not your big-name titles. It's not your, like, major companies that they're collabing with, you know? Uh, it's, you know, just 
really random stuff, which it's just strange to me. So yeah, boats. In, in Transformers, where we barely have any boats, they decided Optimus Prime needed his own uh, warship. And you can see him piloting it. Like, he's right, right there over the second gun placement. It's... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. This is... I, I still do not understand this one at all. I understand this one even less, but you know what? I don't care. This one was fun. I am currently way too obsessed with Splatoon 3. It's been fantastic. I've loved Splatoon since the first one on the Wii U. So when the Wii U did this as one of their Splatfest events where people choose sides about a one or the other debate and fight it out to the splatting uh, over which one is better. So if you've never if you've never played Splatoon, uh, Splatfest or like a Saturday thing where... You pick a side, you do your online battles, and whichever side wins the most fights, that's who gets, you know, that's who the winner of the Splatfest is. A lot of fun. A lot of fun. Great vibe in the game when a Splatfest is going on. This was so much fun. Like, one of the coolest things in Splatoon is you can have, like, custom art that you draw on. And on the Wii U, that was easy. It's not as easy anymore. Uh, but for that game... The artwork in the game and all the referential stuff that people drew in and all of the, like, because I remember, like, seeing, like, Beast Wars Megatron. It has nothing to do with the Splatfest, but it was awesome. I have no idea why this collaboration came out, but, like, as opposed to the other trans uh, video game crossovers, really good to see that they got themselves in with a major video game company, the major video game company, and in one of their premier titles at the time. They're never going to do this again, but man, man, it was fun when it happened. Now, it's not just the world of video games. Comic books also offer us a lot of very strange crossover things with uh, particular characters popping in or Transformers popping in on them. In this case, we're going back to the original run of Marvel Comics, where in order to give Transformers a little bit of a nudge and kind of uh, push it to the... Uh, casual comic audience a little bit harder, they had Spider-Man show up. Just randomly, out of nowhere, Spider-Man gets to battle Megatron. Uh, this It was literally just to try and get people to pay attention to this new comic book about these alien robots. Keep in mind, there was, you know, the toy line barely existed. I'm not even sure if the cartoon was running at the time. This is like the beginning of Transformers, so they felt like they needed to give it a boost. And, you know, good on Marvel for doing it. They had no reason to other than, well, they, they it's it sold comic books, of course. Like, of course they had a reason. Like, okay, so let's not get that twisted. But it does, like, it does give Transformers that little rub, as it's called. Like, it gives them that little nudge from, like, an established character to kind of get them started in the fiction. So it worked out, and it kind of makes Spider-Man like irrefutably connected to Transformers. He's appeared in other crossover comics, the rare times it has happened. Uh, he has had plenty of Transformers himself, of course. So, uh, yeah, this is like our original. This is the very first of the weird collaboration things. Meanwhile, in comics today... IDW went nuts. All the different random licenses they had, they tried to cross over as much as they could. So you got strange things. You got Transformers cross Ghostbusters. You got Transformers uh, cross Back to the Future. Transformers cross uh, X-Files, which I can actually explain. You know, it's alien ro it's aliens hiding on Earth. It's, it's actually perfect for X-Files. But the strangest of all of them was Mars Attacks. Because Mars Attacks is literally just like, it's just a movie, right? You know, it's things that have branched out since then because it's kind of cult classic now. But it's more or less, it's just like, it's it's like close to like just exist for the memes category of like popularity. And there's really nothing that connects them to Transformers other than aliens. It's just bizarre and it's just one of the more nonsensical ones that happened now of all the ones they did it's the most nonsensical it's 
man, it, it's weird. Like we like keep, keep in mind, like IDW now does the Sonic the Hedgehog comics. So if they hadn't lost the license to Transformers now, we might have have had like Sonic showing up as a Transformer at some point. Wouldn't have put it past them, uh, but uh, that would have made the list. It's not just American comic books, though. So, Transformers cross Mazinger Z. It makes more sense because you're talking about fictional robots, especially ones born of Japan. However, it's a little bit different because, one, Mazinger is a giant robot, and it's in the super robot category, which means it's... It's not really, like, ground level like Transformers is. Like, it's fighting massive, like, world calamitous threats. It's fighting giant alien robots. It's fighting, like, at power scales that Transformers just doesn't do. Like, Transformers doesn't do power scaling and, like, like overwhelming power the way that super robot genres do. The same, the way Mazinger does. It's a blending of two icons. Now, then... You could call Optimus Prime a Japanese icon as well, because that's where the original design came from. Stakara did the original creation of Diaclone, etc., etc. Uh, Optimus Prime, as we know him, was born of American fiction, so it's kind of like a hybrid kind of weird situation. But it, in a way, yeah, you're you're dealing with two Japanese robot icons crossing over. In that sense, it actually kind of works. Uh, but it's just it's also just one of those where if you know what you're if you know Mazinger, you think you start to kind of wonder like if this is even relevant if this is even going to work let's talk about toys though because toys also have their own randomness and collaborative weirdness that goes on so this was before Transformers collaborative was a thing this is actually between the crossover toys they were doing with Marvel and Star Wars and the uh, collaborative stuff that we're seeing now. This is Disney label. When Takara was pushing out basically designer Transformers under the label category, which was electronics that could transform, um, uh, like uh, I think uh, the, the shoe Transformer I talk about so much, that would have made the list if I hadn't talked about it so much. That was also a, a, a sports label line. So label was just a thing they did for, like, designer uh, Transformer weirdness. And, yeah, they did a whole run of uh, Disney. So it's Mickey Mouse, it's Donald Duck, there was a Buzz Lightyear as well. The Buzz Lightyear makes sense because he actually turns into a spaceship. But Optimus Prime as Mickey Mouse is not something I ever needed, not something I ever expected to see. But it is a thing that now exists. It doesn't even exist just as this. It also exists in classic Mickey colors. It exists in black and white Mickey colors. And I believe there's a Halloween version as well. They kind of went nuts over this. Meanwhile, Donald Duck got to be a VW bug. So he's the bumblebee of the original Disney crew. If you if that makes any sense whatsoever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's a bizarre... It's a bizarre one. Now, it's neat. Uh, I'm not going to knock. Like, a game in mind. I call this weird collaborative stuff because it comes out of nowhere. It doesn't have really much reason for existing other than just for the sake of it existing. I'm not knocking any of this stuff, really. Outside of maybe the the world of warships. Like, that, that, that makes no sense to me. But I'm not knocking this as like, oh, God, isn't this weird and bad? No. <laughs> this is fun. This is great. This is... Uh, really, really oddball, but in a weird way, it kind of works. I love actually how the rear section, like the, the back wheels of this truck mode, I love how it rotates down in order to create Mickey's big feet. Weird, weirdly enough, the Mickey Mouse Transformer is handling Optimus Prime's feet better than most current Optimus Primes do. Figure that one out for me. Yeah, someone I need to get my hands on one of these. I don't own any, so I, I, I want to experience one in hand. This one came back. There is nothing about Transformers that strikes me as uh, street fighting. Uh, no, nothing, nothing about it that strikes me as a uh, uh, world martial artist competing in a tournament and or trying to stop a dictator from taking over the world, of course. Um, but 
again, it's just a super fun collaborative. And it's also one of those collaboratives that make me wish, like, couldn't you have just, like, kept that deal going a little bit longer so I could get a transforming Mega Man? You know, can I, get, you know, can I get something uh, that's a little bit more to me? As long as you're working with Capcom, can I get something? But strangely enough, like, this actually came back. This was a Japanese release only. When it was a Japanese release, I saw it at Big Bad and TF Source for a long time in the clearance aisle because it's either overproduced or just too weird uh, for everyone to buy. But they put out a U.S. release of it at Hasbro Pulse for pre-order and all of it sold out. So maybe it just wasn't hitting the right audience. Uh, maybe Big Bad Toy Store is not something they like a casual collector is going to know about. So when Hasbro themselves go, hey, you Street Fighter fans, do you want toys that exist for no reason? They go, yes, yes, we do. What I love about these is that there's no attempt to re-sculpt. There's no attempt to re-sculpt. Like, so it's literally just Optimus Prime as Ryu because it's still the faceplate. You know? um, Megatron just you know looks like it's just painted like M. Bison. So they all have this like flesh tone on the robot faces. It's kind of bizarre. It's kind of weird. So... Again, something I meant to get my hands on and never really got around to. So, uh, I don't know. I don't know if I ever will at this point. But it's it's definitely something that starts discussions. Let's say that. So, when the movie live-action movies came out, they opened up a lot of weird ones. Uh, this one is Valvotron, which uh, is a collaboration with uh, Valvoline. Now... Weirdly, the weirder part about this is that you had to actually buy bottles of oil in order to get, uh, in order to get the coupons to send off for this one. Uh, but it is, yeah, it is what it sounds like. It is a Valvoline bottle transformer that has an exclusive toy that really exists that you can really own. It doesn't transform, even though it looks like it's supposed to turn into a Valvoline bottle. It's literally just like a, you know, a very simple figurine type figure thing. Um, so, I mean, we, we know, we know, we know. We know that, like, there's plenty of Transformer collectors out there, but we also know that this is supposed to be a child's brand. It's supposed to be a kid's toy line. So when a kid's toy line says uh, collaboration and you go, hey, kids, if you want the exclusive toy, buy motor oil. Something, uh, something does come across a little bit odd about that. Especially something that doesn't transform, you know? At, le you know, at least, you know, like, Chevy got, like, their custom swerve figure that's all their own mold. And I believe I've only got one left, but man, did I save the weirdest for last. Ha ha ha. Take a look at this monstrosity for me and just give me, a, like, a quick idea of what, like, immediately pops into your head and then uh, keeps you up at night. Uh, so what you're looking at is Giant Fujiwara. So this is based on Hiroshi Fujiwara, who was uh, the uh, he was the manager for a Japanese comedy duo called Downtown, and the Downtown has been going on since like the 80s. Like they've lasted as long as Transformers has, and they are still really and they're still popular and well known in Japan today. So. The two, uh, they came with two headmasters that turned into the members of downtown. But this, this is like, this is the nightmare fuel. This is the one that like, we really like. Now, now don't anyone panic. There is no Fortress Maximus to match. You know, it's just the Cerebros component that was done as a weird promotional crossover thing. Don't, there's no gi gigantic figure that, like, works with this. So it's really just, like, an excuse to sculpt some comedians' heads onto Transformers. Of anything, of anything Hasbro has ever done over here, I don't think anything compares to how weird this is or how niche it is. You know, I talk about Valvotron not being something ever, toys kids would ever get. This is... This is so far away from something kids would want. It's shocking. But I'm going to leave it there because I can't do any more than that. So, like I said, this is a short list. There's tons of things out there I could have included. We might hit it again someday. I don't know. But for now, that's what I got. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you can sleep well tonight with this in your memory for all time. Um, trust me. 
it takes a little bit of time to get there, but you'll get there. And until then, I hope you sleep well. Guys, I am facing the most powerful enemy any YouTuber can face, the algorithm, and I need your help to defeat him. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, and leave a comment. Every time you do, we attack that algorithm and we drive it back until it can no longer defeat this channel. Thank you very much.